Hi, my name is Romano Roths and today we are going to look at what is the history of the waterfall model or process. I have opened already the waterfall model Wikipedia page which you can see down here. The Wikipedia page says the waterfall model is a breakdown of project activities into linear sequential phases where each phase depends on the deliverables of the previous one and corresponds to a specialization of tasks. Let's put that in a picture. You can see that in here we have the process step of requirements which delivers value to the design step which then delivers value to the implementation step, then to the verification step, and then to the maintenance step. So you have the classical waterfall process in here. This is the waterfall process that is commonly used in many enterprises still today. And you have that in the process handbooks in there. And also large enterprises still use this process to deliver complex large software systems. Okay, now in the history of, uh, of this waterfall process there was an article which was written in 1970 by Winston W. Royce, uh, this guy here. And when we are going to look at this article we see that in this article the word waterfall process is not used but many books, many process handbooks are referring to this article of Winston W. Royce. So let's have a look at that article. So as I said this article was written in 1970 and it says managing the development of large software system in 1970. Let's have a look how this looked like. Let me zoom in a little bit. Winston is telling us that I'm going to describe my personal view about managing large software systems in this article, which is good. He also says that the implementation steps to deliver small computer programs is like this. You have an analysis and then you do the coding. Mm, which is somehow not so good when we look at the new ways of working like test-driven development and such things. But let's keep that away. Because on this page we can now clearly see the waterfall process. And this is also the page that many books and also process handbooks are referring to. Here we can see the waterfall process. It says also the implementation steps to develop a large computer program for delivering to a customer. It's the requirements engineering, analysis, program design, coding, testing, operations. So all good. Here is the waterfall process. But what is really interesting is this sentence down here. I believe in this concept, but the implementation described above is risky and invites failure. Oh my God! So the article about waterfall is telling us that this approach is risky. And it also says the testing phase which occurs at the end of the development cycle is the first event in which timing, storage, input, output, transfers, etc. are experienced and distinguished from analyzed. So what he says is that we have a very late integration. At a very late point we know if the system works. And that's the main problem of the waterfall process. That we have a very long analysis and design and implementation phase 
and at the end we are going to test it and potentially it does not work and that's the major problem. But what is now really interesting, when we scroll down to the next page, Winston is introducing an iterative approach and he also says hopefully the iterative interaction between the various phases is confined to successive steps. Which is brilliant. So in the document from 1970 about uh, the waterfall process it says that it is risky to use the waterfall process and you should use an iterative approach. So let's sum that up. When you are still using the waterfall process then I can highly recommend to you to use for complex and complicated process an iterative approach like Agile or something similar. And with that we are at the end of this video. Thanks for watching this video. Please leave me a, a like when you liked that video and also give me feedback uh, in the comment sec section and also um, suggest uh, if you have any suggestions about um, other topics that I should present. And also don't forget to subscribe to my channel because I produce every week a new video for you.